Russian High Command has issued a general retreat of all the surviving Russian forces from the western bank of the Dnipro River. This means retreat from Kherson and the surrounding areas over the river. Yesterday evening the leader of the entire Russian invasion force, General Surovikin, made a sitrep a situation report to Shoigu, Russian defense minister. The mood was bizarre. Everyone has been speculating months about this and now it is here. I want to watch the video together with you guys. It's a treat. Всесторонне оценив сложившуюся ситуацию, предлагается занять оборону по левому берегу реки Днепр. Понимаю, что это очень непростое решение. В то же время мы сохраним самое главное жизни наших военнослужащих и в целом боеспособность группировки войск. So he's playing the card that they will do this to save the lives of their troops and perhaps save the lives of the civilians living around the area and in Kherson. <laughs> That is funny coming from General Surovikin. I mean, he was put in as the position of leader of the entire invasion force to be cruel, crueler than the other generals to their own men, to force them to go to their deaths and to be used as cannon fodder. So coming from his mouth, the words that they will try to save lives is very bizarre to me. <laughs> I gotta appreciate the look on Shoigu's face. It's like, oh shit, I think we screwed up the entire invasion, but okay, carry it. It's like something like that on his face. It's priceless. This face says how the invasion is going for Russia. Без перспективы. Кроме того, высвободится часть силы средств, которая будет задействована для активных действий, в том числе наступательного порядка на других направлениях в зоне проведения операции. Сергей Владимирович, согласен с вашими выводами и предложениями. Приступайте к отводу войск и примите все меры, чтобы обеспечить безопасную переброску личного состава, вооружения и техники за реку Днепр. Есть. Do everything to ensure the safe withdrawal of troops and equipment. I'm quite sure some troops will be left behind. I'm calling it. Маневр войск будет осуществлен в ближайшие сроки. Соединение части займут подготовленные в инженерном отношении оборонительные рубежи позиции на левом берегу реки Днепр. В этих условиях город Херсон и прилегающие населенные пункты не могут полноценно снабжаться и функционировать. So the Kherson contingent cannot be fully supplied with uh, other troops around it. This is what he's saying right now as a reason to pull back. This is what Ukraine has been playing for. They have been systematically destroying all of the ammunition and logistical warehouses they have been finding. I saw the number recently, it's close to 500 in the past six months. Ukraine has destroyed almost 500 ammunition warehouses in Ukraine. This has been the tactic of Ukrainian army and they have knowingly done it slowly and methodically destroying these gathering centers, warehouses, barracks, logistical convoys, just taking out the logistics. And this is the outcome. A few months later, Russians pull back from a huge area. Ukraine doesn't have to liberate all of this area inch by inch, but Russians just cannot afford to stay. I think it's genius. Жизнь людей за обстрелов постоянно подвергается опасности. Противник ведет неизбирательную стрельбу по городу, возможно, применение запрещенных методов ведения боевых действий. В случае, если киевский режим пойдет на дальнейшее увеличение попуска воды из водохранилищ или более мощную ракетную атаку Каховской плотины, образуется поток воды, который создаст so the thing is, the reservoir behind Nova Kohovka Dam is filled with water, right? Uh, Ukrainians have been speculating that Russians might flood Kherson. We know they're not going to do it, but Russians say that Ukrainians are plan planning to flood Kherson. This is in no way possible because the whole water system to Crimea, entire waterway comes from the Nova Kohovka reservoir. If this reservoir would be empty to flood Kherson, Crimea would be without water and Russia couldn't do anything about it. So I don't think Russian high command would shoot themselves in the foot like that, leaving an entire peninsula without water just to flood a city. I think the mood in this room and in this video on the faces of these two people is priceless. It is exactly how the invasion is going for the Russians. Today, my friends, we have a sponsor. Let's go. I'm not an Estonian soldier anymore or an Estonian YouTuber. I am now a Lord of Scotland.
Scotland and these are my lands. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners such as myself are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. They allow people to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Eddleston, Scotland and an official certificate with a crest so that you can call yourself a lord or a lady. Bow before me peasant, off with your head. I'm supposed to be a nice lord. <clears throat> off with your head. Your certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. It makes a great last minute gift. They even have couple packs that come with adjoining plots of land. You could officially change your name to Lord or Lady and get it on your credit card, plane tickets, etc. if your country allows it. You can even get it on your dating profiles. I mean, have you seen some Lords up in Tinder? You're gonna be the first. Established Titles is committed to planting a tree with every order. It is a fun, novel way to help preserve the picturesque woodlands and biodiversity of Scotland while supporting global afforestation efforts. Established Titles is actually running a massive sale right now. Plus, if you use the code ESTONIAN69, yeah, I'm not kidding you, the code is ESTONIAN69, you get an additional 10% off. Established Titles told me that the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot. Within a few minutes of walking, Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady, we can build our own little kingdom. Go to establishedtitles.com slash estonian69 to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Before we go on, I want to state that I have a second channel, Artur Ray Podcast, and today actually Operator Starsky Podcast will be uploaded. I also have shot a podcast with Jendit Commando or Ryan Forrest, and also Chuchomi Moose is coming on, Ryan Macbeth is coming on, Combat Veteran Reacts is coming, all of the different channels, so subscribe to the channel to be notified about future podcasts. Advisory to Zelensky, Potoyak, states this. Russia wants to make Kherson the city of death. The Russian military is mining everything they can. Apartments, sewers, artillery on the left bank plans to turn this city into rubble. We have to pay some mind to this because if Russians pull out of Kherson, they have no reason not to destroy this city anymore. And we saw what they did to Mariupol. Russian artillery probably will start shelling the city very, very strongly. But the Ukrainians have destroyed most of their ammunition warehouses. So, I mean, Kherson is definitely a trap. And I want to acknowledge every last one of you who has been saying it for the past few videos that it is a trap. You are right. My opinion is that Russia leaves a few more big units behind, you know, in a suicide mission to cover the retreat of the last regular units. They would be left behind there and they would probably surrender fast. But the more dangerous thing around Kherson and in Kherson is the traps, the mines, booby traps. This is a brigade commander of the armed forces of Ukraine, Colonel Yuri Madyar. He's stating in this video that he he thinks Russia will be more destructive with Kherson than they were with Mariupol. Because Russia is butthurt. <laughs> They, I mean, they were forced to leave, kind of. So they want their revenge. We see that the Ukrainian high command and the military high command in Ukraine, they're not running into Kherson head first. They know it's a trap. They're advancing very methodically, checking every corner, every hole, every crack. Ukrainian actions right now, military actions, do not look like they would be storming into this trap. Zelensky's advisory, Patolyak, again stated that Russians have not retreated from Kherson until Ukrainian flag waves over the city, no matter what the Russian sign claims. We have some videos about Ukrainians ad methodically advancing slow and steady. Here is a footage from liberated Snigurivka yesterday. Ukrainian troops took this vitally important railway hub and they were greeted with applauding civilians. These clips come from Duchani, where Ukraine advanced yesterday a few kilometers. We can see Russian positions and armor knocked out cold. This footage comes from the village of Pravdina, again liberated. Ukraine is closing the news slowly and methodically. Priority of Ukraine is not gaining ground extra fast like Russia. It is preserving their soldiers' lives. And they pick their fights. They pick the fights they can win. Not like Russia. Look at these photos. What do they look like? 
another Russian defensive line being dark, right? But the weird part is this is in northern Crimea. These are the Chongar and Armyansk checkpoints. There's no wonder they start digging trench lines, defensive lines in northern Crimea after stating that they will pull out from Kherson. There's about 100 kilometers from Armyansk to Kherson. So if Ukrainians advance a little bit over the Dnepr, they would already affect these checkpoints with HIMARS. If you like satellite images, then you obviously like Sutromimus channel. He is the king of reading satellite images. I have him on my Artur Ray podcast channel. The link's in the description below. We are recording in a few days and it will be uploaded in a week or two. So subscribe to the podcast channel in the description to be notified about podcast with Sutromimus. We'll be talking about satellite images in Ukraine. In this video you can see Ukrainian troops being trained in the United Kingdom in urban warfare. UK is giving Ukrainian troops one of the most important things, training and confidence in their training. This is the UK Secretary of Defense Ben Wallace stating that UK will contribute 1000 more anti-aircraft missiles to Ukraine. It comes in a very necessary time because Russia has developed a pattern. Every time they fail big time in a battle or battlefield, they respond with terrorist strikes against the Ukrainian civilian infrastructure. Usually it's electrical or water infrastructure with missiles or drones. We have seen this time and time again and pulling out from Kherson and stating this, this is a loss for the Russians. Missile strike against Ukrainian infrastructure is expected now. And I hope Ukraine can bring down as many of them as possible. The deputy head of the Russian Kherson administration, Kirill Stremwosov, is dead. He supposedly died in a car crash around the same time that Russia stated yesterday that they would be pulling out from Kherson. The car crash happened on the Kherson Oblast territory and this information is confirmed by the Russian news agency TASS. Today Putin signed an ukaz awarding him for courage posthumously. I mean karma got that man real fast. Ukraine will liberate Crimea by next summer in two wrong blitz. These are the words of Lieutenant General Ben Hodges, a former commander of the United States Army in Europe. Let's watch which points does he make to back up this argument that Ukraine will liberate Crimea by the next summer. Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General uh, Ben Hodges, I was, my last assignment in the Army was as the commander of U.S. Army Europe from 2014 to 2017 here in uh, Wiesbaden, Germany. Ukraine has achieved irreversible momentum. Uh, they will probably push Russian forces back to the 23 February line uh, in the next two months, and they will liberate Crimea. Whoa, in the next two months, push Russians back to 23rd, 24th of February lines. This is... I, I'm, a, I'm an optimist in this war and I'm biased towards the Ukrainian side and even I don't believe this, honestly, sorry. For things to happen in two months, a lot of ground needs to be liberated and Ukraine is doing things very slow and methodically. I find it hard to believe, honestly. If you, if you don't agree with me, put it in the comments. But two months and liberate all of southern Ukraine and Mariupol, I mean, I, I don't see this happening. Yeah, uh, by next summer. Uh, Russia uh, has terrible logistics problems um, and, and their situation gets worse. Uh, the mobilization of the 300,000-ish people, um, not only was it terribly executed, but they've already had hundreds of these soldiers killed. Um, they're untrained, poorly. I, I would say here they have thousands and almost tens of thousands of these soldiers killed, perhaps. We, we watched a study two videos ago where every fifth soldier died before going to the front lines about these new mobilized. So I think we're talking about thousands dead already. Equipped being sent into combat and they're, they're paying the price. The Kremlin knew this, of course, and they, they're, they're trading bodies for time, hoping to, hoping to string this out. And it also, the fact that half a million military aged males left the country rather than get mobilized tells you that there is no stomach for this fight in Russia. And which is why Putin wanted to... Uh, again, I want to put my own opinions here. I, I'm not arguing with this man. Ben Hodges, a very smart, uh, intelligent person, and I am just a private. I'm just state, stating my own ideas. He said that people don't have the stomach for this war in Russia. I don't think this is true. I believe Russian populace supports this war. Uh, to support this war in my eyes is to do nothing about this war. If you're Russian and you don't do anything, you don't speak against this, even if you're moving to foreign lands, 
where you don't face arrests anymore, you have to speak against this. If you don't, in my eyes, you support this conflict and 100 million Russians are silent or go with this conflict silently watching the propaganda shows. So in my eyes, Russia stomachs this conflict and the people and the populace in Russia support this conflict. If you don't agree with me, again, put it in the comments. I will read them and I'll respect you for it. Avoid even making it a Russian war instead a so-called special military operation. And we know from history that war is a test of will as much as a test of logistics. And the uh, willpower that we're seeing from Russian forces, they will, they will crack under heavy pressure from Ukrainian forces, which have very high morale. Uh, and the uh, stresses of, the, uh, of a nasty winter is gonna make it very difficult for them. And I think that's, that's why I have a lot of optimism about uh, potential Russian collapse. I'm glad to hear that. Well, the uh, uh, forces that are coming from uh, once Kherson falls, and that's probably going to be a pretty big fight here over the next few weeks. And then the other... And even after Russia stated that they will pull out from Kherson, still, I agree with Ben, it will be a fight. They will not pull out. I think they will leave a few mobic units in it. There will be traps, so it will be a fight to liberate the city. Definitely will not be a walk in the park, just walk into the city and it's liberated. That is not the Russian way of doing things. They will leave units in that city. Mark my words, so I agree with Ben here. Other forces coming down from the north through uh, uh, Donetsk and Luhansk, um, all, you would say, or I would say that all roads lead to Crimea, but they're not going to just, you know, charge across the Perico Peninsula or Isthmus. You know, they're, they're going to get uh, the HIMARS in range to start hitting Russian targets inside of Crimea. Uh, the same methodical approach, HIMARS will soften up the entire grounds for a few months. I mean, softening up the Kherson and around it took three to four months of HIMARS doing work and destroying everything they can find. And then Russians pulled out. So I think in two months to liberate everything. <laughs> Uh, softening up the southern Ukraine to liberate the areas would take months already and then Ukrainian infantry would have to advance. I think we're talking about six months plus to liberate the southern Ukraine here and and Crimea by next summer again I think too optimistic. Probably uh, I would anticipate that they'll keep pressure on the Kerch Bridge which is still not repaired yet and uh, so it'll be a variety of things that they do uh, from uh, kinetic to non-kinetic to uh, attacking the uh, logistics that are necessary to keep Russians supplied in Crimea, uh, all of these things. And um, we already know that the Russians, the Black Sea Fleet is nowhere to be seen. All they do is launch missiles. They don't come out into the sea. Uh, they're terrified of Ukrainian anti-ship missiles and, and Ukraine doesn't even have a Navy. So, um, and the Russian Air Force also has not been a significant uh, contributor as well. So th it's going to take time, but uh, I think the Ukrainians will continue to be very clever on how they employ their capabilities. It gives me a lot of confidence hearing these words from Penn Hodges. It makes me smile. The last video we're going to watch today is Wholesome. I want to end it with a great note. Sean Penn, the actor, went to Ukraine, went to visit Zelensky. I want to watch it because in my eyes, these things, they're non-military, but they're very important because uh, an actor with a huge following in the West guides these followers' attention to this issue of Ukrainian suffering. I believe in this mission, that's why I want to watch this video and show it to all of you guys and get ready for some wholesomeness. Remember, Zelensky was an actor before he was a president. Hi, Sean. He brought his Oscar. No, please, that is yours. No, I, I feel terrible outside. I just, it's just a symbolic, silly thing. Yes, but, but it's, I, if but I know, but if I know this is here with you, then I'll, then I'll feel better and stronger to, for the fight. It's so great, great honor, but, yeah. but until we will. When you, when you win, bring it back to Malibu. Great, great, yes. okay. Because I'll feel okay. much better knowing there's a piece of me here. We have to. Yeah, it's Oscar to Zelensky. It's not from me, it's from Ukraine. And it's more...
they exchanged. Uh, one got an Oscar and now they got a medal. <laughs> wow. The first man who was here was this guy, I think you know him. That is the day, <laughs> and here you, you can read if you don't know this guy. That is a great honor today. There are three places in the world that all the pride of my life will be. The place where my daughter was born, the place where my son was born, and this. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're this proud is, to yeah, know you and no thank words. you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Really, really. No, we, we thank you. We thank you very much. This was great. Honestly, I needed this. A great note to end this video. Good news all around this video and ending with this. I like it. My friends, thank you for coming back time and time again. If you like this channel, then the Patreon link is in the description below. I'll be putting all my research information and intel I have into the Patreon community tab so all the patrons can see it. So if you want to know my research uh, that I do for these videos, become a patron and keep an eye on it. Also, the podcast channel, Artur Ray Podcast, is in the description below. We have Operator Starsky, Gendit Commandos, Uchomimos, Ryan Macbeth and many others coming on already, so stay tuned for it. If you want to follow my personal life, more freedom of posting, that's Instagram. I'm quite free posting there, so that's also in the description below. And until my next video, Slava Ukraine.